I guess we got a part two of this CDI discussion. Sorry about this. My camera just stopped for some reason. Anyway, so we talked about it. Simple as CDI. This CDI has advance in it, but still needs a coil to power it. This is a coil that would power it, but let's say your coil is destroyed like this, right? This is 100 to 150 bucks. Um, this thing goes in one of the big reds. I replaced it. But let's say you were able to put together a system such that you did not have to worry about the coil any longer. As a matter of fact, you didn't even have to worry about the ignition coil. The only thing you really had to worry about was the Hall effect. So, basically, the only thing you're using off this engine for troubleshooting are these two wires and you want to hook to ground obviously but let's say that's all you're doing given that it's hard to move I can walk but it's very hard to move small steps at a time I kind of very lungy for that anyway so let's say you could do that let's say you could give it 12 volts right into one of these so that gets rid of this whole affair right you use the Hall effect off the engine, right? That's just wiring, just wiring. The ignition trigger is matched to this. So you have both those things external. Then all you have to do is hook up the spark plug wire. So basically, if you're able to get a 12 volt powered CDI unit, you provide a battery for the 12 volts. You provide a coil, and on eBay, these things come as a match set. So you have those two things right there. The Hall effect you get off the engine, the ground you get off the engine, and obviously you need a spark plug. If you don't have a spark plug, you have two problems. You have a hole in the engine and <laughs> you have nothing to fire off the gas. So there we are. Um, currently, I have one of these with its matching uh, coil, ignition coil on order. They are a $20 item from eBay. My theory is that I'm gonna be able to put the whole thing together, put a 12 volt battery to it, hook it to these two wires right here. I'm gonna pull the string, I'm gonna have spark and everything's gonna be wonderful. The only bad thing about using it on this type of engine is the only 12 volt CDI I can find has advance built in. Well, this engine also has advance. So, it'll probably start, it'll probably run at eight, nine hundred RPM. At a thousand RPM, according to the schematics I've looked at and the spec sheets I've looked at, these bigger CDIs start doing their electronic advance. So now I have the CDI doing an electronic advance and the spark doing a mechanical advance, which is advancing the spark. And I have the feeling it'll get to the point where the spark will break up. You, you know, the engine will start breaking up. The spark will be too far out front. It'll knock or it, it'll just be so far out front and, and won't fire. Um, what will happen is basically the engine, the advance, will, the spark will be so far out front, the engine will start losing RPM, the RPM will fall down, eventually the spark will retard to the point where the engine will start firing again. Um, another quick comment, if you go to fire up one of these engines and you have the advance set too fast, right, you can do the whole timing thing through this little hole right and then you turn the plate on this thing forward and backwards to get your timing proper if you have your timing too far advanced you might get a little bit more power but that's when the engine kicks back and threatens to rip your arm off and beat you about the head and shoulders with it so not overly uh, advised if you run it a little bit retarded it might help you start right it might might make it a tad easier to start definitely won't kick back and bite your arm as bad but then uh, you, do, you start losing it on top end. So you want to put the timing where you want it to be, where it's supposed to be. 
So, back to my theory, just to, to review. I'm figuring if I could get one of these that runs on 12 volts and the match coil and a battery, all I have to do is hook up a few wires and I have my own portable electronic ignition system which makes troubleshooting engines really easy. One other quick comment. Um, the most common problem with these ignition systems is improper ground. And I mention that because as I'm looking at this engine, it's not wearing this bolt here, right? So I might not, the reason why this thing might fire and stop firing, fire and stop firing, I might not have proper ground. Um, depending on the wire harness, some of the wire harnesses actually do bolt up to ground somewhere around here. And some of them do not, depends on the year of the bike. Um, if you do not have an engine ground, um, you do not get the full or a weak engine ground, you do not get the full power from your stator to your CDI unit. So when you fire, you know, you have a weak spark, or in my case on this bike, an intermittent spark. The whole problem with this bike might be once again, this bolt is missing and you can see it's kind of corroded. I probably have an engine ground issue. If I clean up the engine grounds, this thing will probably develop a nice spark and she'll fire right up. Remember I told you it would fire like once or twice and stop, once or twice and stop. I think the issue is um, that I, I have an engine ground issue. Um, I've been caught by this like a half a dozen times. So guys, whenever you have a bike that doesn't start, check all your grounds. Check the grounds for the wiring harness. Check the grounds for your coil. Check your motor grounds. I mean, obviously, you want to check all your connections and everything else, 